Tonight, Fox 10 investigates uncovering more layers to the sober living crisis, a scheme that preys on Native Americans battling addiction as companies bill Medicaid and steal your tax dollars. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live with how a hotel property in Tempe is now at the center of a state investigation. John, Christina, we've heard it from Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays herself. Residential homes, short-term rentals, and motels are fair game for providers to house Native Americans as long as Medicaid money comes in using unlicensed locations. As we're learning, the Department of Health is taking action against a treatment center out of a Tempe hotel. So what you would normally see of a standard hotel that has vehicles parked there, there's nothing all the way around. And it's completely empty. It doesn't take long to realize things aren't what they seem. Sitting in a car with Navajo Nation police across the street from this hotel. The property looks like a Ramada Inn on North Scottsdale Road, not far from ASU. You do see a lot of foot traffic of Native Americans coming out. Or either they'll go across to the QT there, get something to drink, and you'll see them come back and... We're in the middle of a ride-along with Navajo police, searching for Native Americans displaced by shut-down fraudulent rehab centers. The fallout of a scheme targeting vulnerable tribal members in need of behavioral health services, fraudulently billing Arizona's Medicaid agency, known as Access, for hundreds of millions of dollars. Special Operations Coordinator Harlan Cleveland and Sergeant Roland Dash believe this type of activity is happening inside this hotel. Why would using a hotel be more helpful? The way I see a residential place will only house maybe eight to maybe 10 people, but here, 180. Navajo Nation police have been conducting surveillance and speaking to those who are housed here. When we contacted, there was about 180 that were in here. And this is that one where uh, I think they were charging right around $200, $267 a night. So this facility is probably making over 40,000 a night and charging people. We observe four to five white vans, a couple security guards, and families who Navajo police believe are Native American. If the facility might already be on the Attorney General's radar, they'll convey, yeah, we, we kind of know about that facility. Later, we return to stake out the property. We reach Hung Pham, the property owner. He refuses to comment on the record about anything, but court records reveal the franchise agreement between Pham's company and Ramada was terminated in February of 2022. Documents say Ramada Worldwide demanded all signs of the brand to be removed. A simple Google search shows the former Ramada is permanently closed, but our cameras captured a different story. So we've been out here for about seven hours watching this hotel property, and here's what stands out. We haven't seen one car with a group of guests check into this hotel with luggage, anything like that. What we have seen are multiple vans stop at the front of the entrance, and one of them dropping off a group of people. Structures already, everything is set up, so they would just bring somebody in and say, okay, you can stay in this room and you can uh, go, to, go to your counseling or do your um, counseling services online. Everything is there. I mean, we all know the hotels have all the infrastructure already set up, and it's, it's a prime perfect place to, to, to put a facility. We discovered new information from the state's Department of Health Services. DHS says an unlicensed outpatient treatment center operated out of this hotel property, providing services they did not have authority to offer. The facility DHS is referring to is owned by New Found Hope LLC. A cease and desist order served by the state accuses the company of running an unlicensed healthcare institution 
at a decommissioned Ramada hotel. DHS says medical records date back to July 2022, revealing 83 beds assigned to patients. Two former employees of Newfound Hope are providing insight to Fox 10 and wish to remain anonymous. We'll call them Jane and Sarah. Jane says it was all about sheer volume. Whatever it takes to get more bodies in there. It doesn't matter if you have access at the moment because they'll get you on it. And she says it was common to see families with young children there. You have children of all ages, zero to 17, living amongst the patients in a hotel that is very minimally supervised. Per DHS, daily transport was arranged for patients from the hotel to Newfound Hope's Wellness and Detox Center in Tempe, near Baseline and Rural Roads. If you have everybody under your thumb and you take away the excuse of, I don't want to leave my family, or then you have complete control. And then you physically bring them to your clinic so that you can bill for them and then you bring them back where you can make sure they don't leave. Just two months before the cease and desist order, Access suspended payments to Newfound Hope over several allegations, including Medicaid fraud, failure to follow medical documentation guidelines, services provided without clinical oversight, as well as excessive and duplicate billing. How would an employee be trained to bill this way to pretty much game the system? Yeah, there isn't really any training. There is um, initially the people who were already doing it would show us this is the way to do it. And then we learn a little bit more and okay, you can do it this way or this way or it's better this way. And then when one way is discovered where you can name your own price, that's what you run with. Jane claims Newfound Hope received up to $1,500 per day per patient from the state's Medicaid system. Sometimes 150 plus patients. Five days a week. Five days a week, $1,500 a day for that many people. That's a good chunk. That rate amounts to $4.5 million a month. In the cease and desist, an employee told DHS that multiple patients should not have been admitted to the program due to having active withdrawal symptoms and not completing a full detox. It's trickery, really, is what it is. They go to the reservation, you can bring everybody, you can bring all your stuff, free housing, free food, and go to class if they're told that, or and if they're, they might not be sober. Many, many times they're not sober when they're picked up. Sarah describes inadequate living conditions. It kind of look like a, I don't know, a shelter, a homeless camp or something like that. If you're able to bill and get more than $1,000 a day for one person and basically you, you're not providing the services you say you are, you're feeding them low-grade food, that, that's messed up. I knew something wasn't right, but I didn't realize how big it was. The Department of Health cited Newfound Hope with fines totaling $141,000. Today, DHS confirmed that Newfound Hope is still at the property despite being served with the cease and desist order and now a notice of intent to revoke at this outpatient treatment center location, told the company can still do business while appealing these actions. And we have reached out to Newfound Hope multiple times for comment. We are still waiting for a response. What the heck is going on? How are they able to operate when everybody seems to be on to this? Yeah. Yeah, two actions by the state, and we are told that as they fight these actions and in this appeal process, they can still remain on the premises. This is an ongoing investigation. And remember, there are serious allegations regarding billing practices as well, hence why Access suspended payments to Newfound Hope. They won't be getting any reimbursements for Medicaid services uh, provided since so February. They're not getting paid now. Well, we they're don't know how they may be getting paid. We know that Access has suspended payments. Right. To okay. this Obviously, company. there's money somewhere, but there we must just be don't know. Coming in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But how do, what how about do you keep it going? Yeah. What about the children? Because as we heard in that piece, there allegedly there are children there as well, because there are whole families in this what used to be a hotel. Yeah, we definitely saw the families and many children. Uh, health officials identified a newfound hope youth program. 
DHS just wants to make sure that health standards, health and safety standards are met at this location. And the cease and desist order also says that the company's COO tried to deny access to compliance officers earlier in May when they were trying to do this unannounced on-site survey. And this is all in the documents, this cease and desist order. We have it online, fox10phoenix.com, as well as the access notice of suspension. Okay, so what's next? What's next? This investigation, will be tracking it. We'll be in touch with DHS as well as access and uh, see what happens at this location. We'll be tracking this. Great work. Wow. Keep the pressure on. Yeah. Justin Lum tonight. Thank Thanks, you. Justin.